All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, we have a we got a vlog for you. That's what we do here on Thursdays. We vlog. We sit and we vlog. We talk about vaping and beer and stuff like that. I have been gone for the last six days, six days away from my computer. I apologize. I uploaded a vlog on Thursday. Uh, I did not get a chance to reply to any comments on it because I uploaded it Thursday. I flew to Baltimore uh, that morning at 6 a.m. Uh, and then uh, I've been gone the whole time. I just got home yesterday. I have not prepared for this vlog uh, very well at all. We do have some first impressions. I do want to talk a little bit about VCCPA. There's some advocacy stuff to talk about. I do have a beer and I do have a retro vape set up. So maybe, uh, maybe a little bit prepared. Um, I'm still very, very slightly <coughs> coughing. I cough a little bit and I've got a little bit of a cloggy nose. I feel great. I just... Uh, Still very, very slightly under the weather, so I apologize. But moving forward into the vlog, let me get out my vlog notes because there's a, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. Like I said, for the last six days, I was gone at uh, VCCPA Vaping Convention Circuit. That's my hat. Uh, in Pittsburgh, which was a really, really cool city. I didn't quite know what to expect. I was kind of expecting uh, another, you know, kind of dirty East Coast city, but it was... It was really, really cool. Very, very cool city. Uh, Sean took me to, Sean from the Plumes of Hazard. he took us to a, uh, a church that has been converted into a brewery. And it was very, very cool on the inside. Like, very, very cathedral churchy. And then, like, up at the altar, uh, you know, where the Christ would be hanging was, was brewing equipment. It was just a big brewery. And I drank beer and uh, we had pizza and it was... It was really, really good, and we went and saw Jurassic uh, World while we were in Pittsburgh as well the night before. But the uh, I was gone at the VCC event, so VCC event, VCC event. So I haven't got to reply to any uh, emails, of which I only I think I only received 244 emails while I was gone over the course of six days. 244 emails. Yeah, so I'm slowly going to be getting through those. I'm slowly going to be getting through Facebook private messages. I don't know if I'm going to attack any YouTube comments. I might go through and reply to a bunch of them on YouTube. But yeah, I didn't get to reply to any of the comments on my last vlog on the tour of the office, which I hope you enjoyed. I haven't even read any of the comments, so... Hopefully people enjoyed it. Hopefully people uh, were into it. Hopefully not everybody was just like angry and stuff like that. Um, no big deal. So moving forward, um, uh, there was uh, a new call to action from CASA. Now, is, uh, this isn't a call to action. This is a call to action that was emailed to me uh, from CASA. The FDA call to action, submit comments for FDA's second workshop regarding e-cigarettes. No, that's not right. This is the third workshop. Why did they give me the wrong link? Kasa, <sighs> here's the thing. Okay, so here's here it is. I'm going to post this link in the description. Kasa's call to action, submit comments to FDA's third workshop regarding e-cigarettes. The first three FDA workshop, uh, the first of three FDA workshop was held on December 24th. Uh, to, or December 2014, it doesn't say 24th, I don't know why I said that, the 2nd in March and the 3rd in June. You have until July 2nd, 2015 to submit comments on all three workshop. Please see the CASA call to action for the first workshop and the CASA call to action for the second workshop for details and instructions for commenting on the first two workshops. Those workshops offered more critical opportunities for customer input, so if you have not responded to those CTAs, you might want to start with one or both of them rather than this third one. So the third one focuses on issues related to population health. The quality of presenters was substantially improved compared to the previous workshops, with almost half of them presenting useful and honest scientific information. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and read this whole thing. Um, I've read the whole thing. I don't want to read the whole thing just word for word. I would encourage you to click on the link, do your part. There is effort involved. This isn't something where you just uh, click and then sign your name and then send it and go, yeah, I did advocacy. I did my part. This is actually like follow the instructions, write up a thing, sign your name, 
send it off. It's 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 a little bit more involved than uh, than just clicking a link or reposting something on Instagram. This is actually like an involved process. And like I said, I'll post a link in the description to the FDA's uh, third call to action. One thing that I did want to talk about as well that I don't have uh, the link up to truth about vaping hell yeah so truth about vaping uh the truth about vaping is a youtube channel uh run by a very lovely girl named danielle her name just came out uh the other night she got introduced to the world but she's been doing these kind of on her own and they are partnering up or working in conjunction with uh, notblowingsmoke.org, which has been one of the most successful advocacy groups, uh, I mean, of the last year easily. Um, Maybe you may have seen. Okay, shh, Danielle, shh. Um, I'll post a link in the description to the Truth About Vaping television commercial, which is actually really, really cool. And in fact, I'm gonna put it in this video. You know what, you know what we should do right now is just watch the Truth About Vaping television commercial now. Many of you may have seen or heard misleading information about using electronic cigarettes, otherwise known as vaping. So allow me to tell you the truth. Vaping is not smoking, a health hazard, marketing to kids, big tobacco. Vaping is small local businesses, creating American jobs, less harmful than combustible tobacco, helping people quit smoking. There's a lot they aren't telling you about vaping. So yeah, that's the commercial. It's a fan freaking tastic commercial. Uh, this is gonna air evidently on television. Now I don't know the details of when and where and what stations and stuff like that, but it is going to get aired on television. And I think I think that's a wonderful thing. I I love the work that Not Blowing Smoke has done. I especially love the work that Danielle has done and put uh, hard work into this there's other two other truth about vaping episodes that are kind of little uh little videos that get some information out there this is actually a television commercial that's going to be airing uh it's going to be airing on on tv i'll post the link in the description to uh where you can share it and spread it around and not just uh not just watch it once in this video but i do think it's uh i do think it's very very cool now one more thing that i had to do um was uh, someone had posted this on Reddit and I have not had any problems with my IPV version 4. It's been just fan freaking tastic, okay? It's been ah, it's been amazing. I have had no problems with it. Plenty of power, plenty of battery life. I've had no problems with with anything. I mean, literally with anything, it's been fantastic. Plumes of Hazard touched on this on their show. I'm going to touch on it in my show. Don't take your IPV apart uh, for any reason. Evidently, there's a screw. There's a set screw in here. You can see it right here. This set screw right here. Well, the housing that that screw goes into is a metal housing. So it's a metal screw going into a metal housing. And there is a thin sort of layer of filminess to protect the charging board from that screw. If that screw housing touches the charging board, that's when shit goes bad really, really fast. So people have been taking their charging boards out of here as a safety precaution or opening it up and messing with that little flap in there that protects the housing from the charging board and fucking things up and causing all these super hard shorts and battery failures and burnouts and then there's another issue with the IPv4 saying check atomizer after 10 minutes of use so after someone's using it for 10 minutes the IPv4 is shutting down and saying check your atomizer so this person posted and said, hey guys, I got my IPv4 black today, and it's saying check atomizer literally 10 minutes into using it. Does anyone have any idea on how to solve this? I screwed the 510 in and out just a hair with no luck. I have no idea what the hell's going on with this piece of crap, and I'd love some feedback on how to resolve it. If everyone has experienced the same issue, then he updated it a few minutes later and says, wow, it looks like I'm not alone. It appears the black IPv4 has run into some major issues. We have had at least six reports now on this thread. Please continue to update this thread so we can keep track of what's going on. Uh, can you post your serial numbers under the battery? Maybe we can identify a bad batch or run. So evidently, the black version 
of the IPv4 has a reoccurring issue and they haven't been able to nail it down to any sort of uh, run or batch that was bad, but 10 minutes into using it, it says, please check your atomizer. Um, there were six people in this thread that had the same exact issue, but only with black IPv version four. So thankfully I got a, uh, I got a silver IPv version four. And like I said, it's been working fantastic. If you have a black one, you can go check up on this thread. If not, um, the only words of wisdom I have for you are don't uh, take apart your IPv4 for any reason. Just leave it alone and just don't use the charging port. That's the best thing you can do. If you try to take it apart and take out that charging port and you do something wrong, you have the you have the you have the ability to royally fuck up your mod. Um, so just don't do it. Leave it alone. Don't take your IPv4 apart unless you. I mean, unless you really really know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, you want to jump in there. Absolutely, more power to you. Take it apart, be like Mast from Plumes of Hazard and just take things apart and put things back together. I don't have the ability to do that. It's never appealed to me to try to take this apart and fiddle with it and fix shit on the inside and put it back together. I'm just thankful that mine works uh, really, really good right away, right out of the gate. So what I want to do now, right before we get to beer, I want to do, I do want to talk a little bit about the VCCPA event. So VCCPA happened in Pittsburgh uh, this last weekend, and it was uh, really, really fun. I flew to Baltimore. Um, Matt from Suck My Mod and I both flew to Baltimore. We stayed at Sean from the Plumes of Hazard's house. The next day, we drove up to, to Pittsburgh. Uh, we ate at the church. We went and saw the Lost World, or not the Lost World, we went and saw Jurassic World. We just hung out and met so many cool people. The next day was the day of the event. It started really early. Um, it started, I think vendors had to be there at 8 a.m., which is, which is a bad idea to do that. Vendors had to be there at 8 a.m. I think I showed up at around 10.30 or 11 o'clock to the event. Um, it was just going right away. So the big difference between this event and a lot of other events that I've gone to, I apologize, let me have a vape. The difference between this event and a lot of other events I've gone to is a lot of other events are Friday, Saturday. This event was Saturday, Sunday. And when you have an event that's Friday, Saturday, usually the first day is slow, the second day is busy. But when you have an event that's on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday is busy and Sunday was a little bit slow. So Saturday was just crazy chaos packed all the time. I was planted firmly by the Namber Juice table. I was meeting tons of people, taking loads of selfies with people and just, you know, doing, uh, doing the vape meat thing. Um, we had the Grim Cult juices there, and people really, really liked them. Of course, we had Epic Clouds there, and people really liked them. We had the new Hexome V2s, which we're going to have on the site hopefully very, very soon there. And people liked them, and I loved meeting people. I just like meeting people. Um, there's so many vapors in the world who run in different circles. You know what I mean? It's like, these guys belong to the cloud chucker society, and these guys belong to this group, and they're the Ohm Troopers, and they're the... The Vape Hooligans. Shout out to uh, shout out to the Vape Hooligans. I'll post a link in the description if you want to follow him on uh, Instagram. He just posts tons of tons of cool shit. Very cool guy as well. But all that kind of is goes away at a vape meet. Like yeah, you hang out with your clicks, but everybody wants to meet everybody else. I've never seen any like beef at a vape meet where people just don't want to associate with each other like oh that guy's being a dick it's like nah you're at a vape meet just fucking relax it's a vape meet it's vaping okay you can hang out and have fun for one solid day and it's great and i get to meet uh tons of cool people i posted a picture on instagram of a very small portion of the people that i got to meet but i did get to meet a lot of uh a lot of very very cool people there was uh Lord Nimbus was there. He's a builder on Instagram. He built me a sick little coil on a tugboat atomizer that I don't have anywhere near me for some reason. I just don't have it. But shout out to Lord Nimbus. Of course, Fresh Skater J was there. Got to hang out with uh, Mark from Lab Rat Liquids, Sean from the Plumes of Hazard. Of course, the incredible Namber Juice crew was there as well. Uh, Eric from Titan Mods. Um, I did get to try. I didn't get to walk around barely at all at this event. And this event was like 80% juice vendors. It was more like 90% juice vendors. And so I didn't really get to walk around and try a lot of juices. Uh, I did get to stop by Majestic. 
Majestic e-liquid and I grabbed three bottles of their juice. This one is like a green tea white chocolate flavor It is really weird. Oh, man. It's so weird, but it's unique It's interesting and I like unique and interesting things Very, very cool. Um, additionally, I got to meet and run into uh, Brian. So Brian sent me uh, a little care package that had that Stormtrooper t-shirt in it. It was a Stormtrooper with the skull and crossbones, but it was a Stormtrooper and crossbones. And he sent me a book that was the Death Troopers. He was there and he was wearing the shirt that he sent me. And I was like, oh, holy shit, I have that same shirt. And he's like, yeah, I know, I sent it to you. And I was like, oh, holy shit, you're Brian. And so he gave me another t-shirt that is currently in the laundry, but it's uh, the trooper from the Iron Maiden cover. And it says Imperial Troopers and it's got a stormtrooper like holding the, you know, holding the empirical flag, imperial, imperial flag instead of the, uh, instead of the British flag. Very, very cool. So shout out to you, Brian. Like I said, I just, I met so many people and there was, it was a really cool event. What I really liked about it is it seemed to be less trade showy and more vape meaty, which is what I love. That's exactly what VaporCon West is going to be. It's going to be less trade showy, more vape meaty, more based around like direct consumer to 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 business relationships where you can go and, and talk to your favorite vendors and try their liquids and try their products. It was just uh, it was just really, really fun. Most of all, I liked that there was no really loud like oons oons music happening throughout the venue. You go to some of these vape mates like uh, I felt bad for uh, White Label Juice Co. when we were at um, the Las Vegas Vape Summit because they were right next to the stage and the stage just had a loop of obnoxious dance music happening and really bright lights and obnoxious dance music happening and that that ruins vape meets for me. That makes me not want to be in the room anymore when I hear that going on just constantly just oons, oons, oons. I'm like this is not a rave. Stop it. Just stop it. Just let me relax and hang out with my vaping friends for a little bit. Really, really cool event. Shout out to Kevin Skipper. He goes hard on the advocacy um, side of it. There were a lot of very cool people there. Of course, the vaping militia was there as well. And we got to see DJ Miami, Mr. P. Bissardo, spinning records from 1986. Um I'll link below in the description to the last night's Plumes of Hazard episode. Not last night, Monday night's Plumes of Hazard episode where me and Matt were there in Sean's uh, in Sean's basement office. But there is some pretty freaking hilarious footage of Mr. Phil Basardo being DJ Miami trying to, uh, you know, pump up the crowd and spin music. And it's uh, it's just funny. Obviously, I love Phil. Shout out to Phil as well for doing the DJ Miami thing. And they raised a couple thousand dollars for uh, for advocacy. by They were selling tickets to get into DJ Miami. And uh, they raised a bunch of money for it. And it was great. And... VCCPA was just a great event. Uh, I would love to go back. I would love to go to another VCC event organized by Kevin. I think he does a really good job. He told me he's coming out to Reno July 10th and 11th for VaporCon West, which I think is just fan-freaking-tastic. Um, yeah, so yeah, VCCPA, really, really good time. So what I want to do now is beer. I want to do beer, and I wish I wish I had a beer graphic but I don't have a beer graphic. Maybe I'll try to make a beer graphic. I did a shout out graphic last week and that was pretty fun. So what I have here is a beer from Modern Times and I don't think this is on Beer Advocate at all. Uh, Modern Times Mega Black House. So they have, uh, they have Black House. Okay, so they don't have Mega Black House. Um, the Black House, oh, they do have the Mega Black House. Mega Black House on Beer Advocate. Look at that, scoring high. Uh, I'm a big fanboy of, of Modern Times uh, Brewery. I think a lot of the beers that they do are really, really good. And they have one called Black House, which is their coffee stout. Um, this is their Mega Black House, which is an Imperial coffee stout. I'm just gonna read it. It says, uh, Coffee Oatmeal Imperial Stout, Mega Black House, Big Beastly version of black 
of Black House. Uh, the Black House is great. It's one of my favorite beers, I mean, of all time. And then they have the Mega Black House, which scored a 93% on Beer Advocate. So I'm really, really excited about this. Thankfully, it's not a uh, cork because uh, cause fuck corks. So we're going to open that. I got my... Uh, I got my fanboyish modern times, uh, oops, where's the graphic? Modern times glass right there. We're gonna pour this. You know what? Let's go over the keyboard since that's what we always do all the time anyway. And I was reading, it's funny, I was reading beer pouring techniques on, uh, on YouTube. I was watching a bunch of videos. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice little head on there. Whoa, my, my camera's on autofocus. That should not be happening. Why is my camera on autofocus? That is freaking me out. Okay, I have to turn that off right now before we drink this beer. Autofocus is just a terrible idea. I just hate it, but yeah. Nice little head on there. Look how dark. I mean, look how li just seriously black that beer is. That beer is black dark. This is, what's great about modern times is I went to their brewery and uh, they have a brewery tasting room and they have a coffee uh, coffee roasters in there that they roast their own coffee to use in their Black House and Mega Black House, uh, uh, you know, releases their beers, which is cool. I don't know, I don't know if other breweries do it the same way, but they brew their own or they roast their own coffee to use in their own beer, which I think is a. <gasps> Oh, pardon me. I haven't even had any beer yet, Robin. And uh, yeah, so let's give this a shot. Let's look at these uh, tasting notes real fast. Uh, super dark, not much head. Sure. Loads of coffee, uh, roasted malts and licorice. Tons of uh, coffee. Smells like costed ro Smells like coffee roasted. Why do people... Ooh, that makes me so mad. Smells like coffee roasted. Who talks like that? Who says, that smells like coffee roasted? No, you say, that smells like roasted coffee. Morons. Oh, I hate that. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, roasted coffee, chocolate, oatmeal, licorice. Um, I'm very, very excited to get into this beer. So cheers. Here's to you, everyone. It's so intense. It tastes like a black coffee. That's what I get from it. It's a very dark, very, very f like French roast, like just blackened coffee flavor. Oh my gosh. That is intense. There's not a chance that I could, uh, I could drink this every day. I could drink this once a month. It's so intense. Um, what is the alcohol content on this? Oh, it's only 10%. 10% alcohol by volume. Uh, oh, it shows you the coffees that they use. So they use 75% Ethiopia, which is great, and 25% Sumatra, which if you were tasting those coffees together, uh, it would be horrible. So Ethiopian coffees generally have a very lemony, citrusy flavor, and Sumatra coffees generally have a very earthy, herbally, like potting soil type of flavor. So those... Those mixed together as coffee minus the beer would not be uh, would not be an enjoyable uh, would not be an enjoyable thing. Uh, they use two row roasted barley, flaked barley, pale chocolate, crystal sixty, crystal one hundred and twenty, uh, Munich oats, dark chocolate, black barley, midnight wheat. It's the big beastly version of the year round coffee stout. It rocks a massive coffee aroma and flavor. Yes. Massive coffee aroma, massive coffee flavor, massive coffee flavor. That is so crazy. I mean, it tastes like beer. Of course it tastes like beer. You get like hoppy, malty alcohol flavor. And then there's this, oh, there's this trumpeting over all of that is this huge, huge coffee, coffee flavor. That is crazy talk. Oh my gosh, that is insane. If, you have, if you're a dark beer fan and you have the ability to get this mega black house from modern times, um, please do it. Just do it. It is, oh my gosh. I wish Joe, Joe doesn't watch my videos. Joe from Namber Juice, I wish you could taste this beer. I would love to send you some of this beer. 
Oh my gosh. That's intense. It's intensity in 10 cities. That Modern Times Black House, mega Black House is uh, is crazy. So what, uh, so what I wanna do now is probably I wanna do some shout outs. It is shout out time. So yeah, I've got a lot of shout outs. The shout outs just pile up like crazy. And the first shout out is, uh, is a fella on Instagram, Vigilante808. He, he messaged me and uh, don't message me on Instagram. Instagram is the most pain in the ass, hard, awful way to message with somebody. I just dislike it so much. But he says, uh, hey, Grim, I know you're busy, but can I ask you a favor? It would be an honor if I could possibly get a birthday shout out from you. Um, and I said, absolutely. I said, when was your birthday? He said, it's today. And this was four days ago. So happy birthday to you, Vigilante808. Um, hope you had a good birthday. I also want to give a shout out to uh, what was his name? I just saw him on here. Lord Nimbus, that's right. I want to give a shout out to Lord Nimbus. He did build me a very, very cool coil. And I'll post a link in the description to where you can check out his uh, his Instagram account. It's all full of just, uh, you know, uh, builds and juice and tattoos. And he does crazy. He does, you know, he does these kind of builds that just... Here, let me turn down the brightness a little bit. He does those kinds of builds. Those silly types of builds and... Things like, uh, you know, double staple fused cat track Clapton nonsense. He does very cool builds, so shout out to Lord Nimbus. Let me open, let me actually get to, let me actually get to my, uh, my shout outs. Uh, why is life, why is life so hard? Just answer me. Why is life so hard? I had uh, a shout out. I had a bunch of shout outs all planned. I had a bunch of shout outs. Where did all my shout outs go? I can't believe I don't know where. I had one specifically that I was going to do this week. I apologize. Uh, this comes to me. Be, I can't. I don't know whose name it is. It just says me. It says from me to me. So I don't know what that means. He writes and says, hello, Grim. I just wanted to share something with you. Something with you I've noticed not too long ago. Uh, it amazes me how much vaping grows and is still growing. Not long ago, maybe two years at my Two years ago at my job, there were two vapors, and now I'm happy to say that there are dozens and that number is still actually growing. Uh, of course vaping is growing. Why would vaping not be growing? It's fucking awesome. Everybody's going to be vaping soon. Every day I have smokers asking me for information on vaping, trying to see if vaping would be good for them. I gave away my starter kits to a fellow coworker, and he uses it every day. It's fun... Uh, it's fun to get so much into this that you actually want to help people quit when they come to you. Yeah, absolutely. Vaping is like a life-changing thing. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for all your videos. I never miss a vlog. Keep up the good work. Also, to all the advocates and people fighting for our rights uh, to help us being able to keep helping others. Can you shout out my favorite place uh, I started vaping? It's called Vape Boutique in Bra Brian Quebec, Canada. Vape boutique in Bra Quebec, Canada. There you go. Absolutely. You that shop that I can't pronounce the name of. Absolutely. Consider yourself uh, consider yourself shouted out. Another fellow Mike writes to me and says, "Hey Grim, my name is Mike." Uh, I would like to ask for a quick shout, quick shout out for my girlfriend, Marie. She has been th through some truly traumatic things in her life and has lost several people in her family and still has one of the kindest and still is one of the kindest, most loving person I know. I'm sorry. She watches your videos with me every day and has helped me quitting smoking and getting into vaping. I would like to do something for her to show that her kindness and warm heart are what makes her such a strong person. She thinks you're hilarious. I mean, and loves learning and listening to you. She is the most beautiful girl I have ever seen and she is the only person I know that will vape with me in spite of our lack of friends. Uh, I know it would make her so happy if you were to shout her out. Thanks, Grim. you're our favorite. Absolutely, uh, Mike and Marie, 
consider yourself shouted out. Having someone there to support you in your habit, uh, in your changing, you know, becoming a better person type of thing is is very, very crucial. Um, I meet a lot of, especially at Vape Meets, I meet a lot of people who, you know, the husband vape, vapes and the wife doesn't do, doesn't vape or smoke, or the wife vapes and the husband doesn't smoke or vape, but they're there to like support each other. And I think that's, a, I think that's an incredibly incredibly important thing so definitely shout out to Marie definitely shout out to Mike uh, keep being a good uh, keep being a good uh, functioning supportive unit like that uh, I got one more here Bryant uh, my name is Bryant I love your videos it's a great movement you have going I would like to cover something that I have not seen any vape reviewers cover and you are the best so I'm coming to you Oh, thank you, Bryant. That means a lot to me. Most people use vaping to quit smoking, but I actually used it to quit dipping slash chewing tobacco. Great point. I was dripping. Uh, I was dipping nearly two cans a day for about four years and could never fathom being able to quit. Many people, including my local vape shop, told me vaping would not help me quit. Why would Why would they say that? But I tried it anyway. Safe to say they were wrong. All types of tobacco users, including dippers, can use vaping to quit. I did not get any of the withdrawal effects. I could not be happier to see the health of my teeth and gums improving so quickly. Tobacco free for seven weeks now. Thank you for listening. Trying to get the word out to help people who are addicted to dipping as well because vaping is the answer. That's absolutely true. There's a, there's not tobacco use isn't just limited to uh, to smoking. There's people who who use tobacco in other forms that could greatly benefit from vaping, and that's that's absolutely true. You know, we have this whole fuck cigarettes, fuck big tobacco mentality, but. It's not just cigarettes that are the enemy. People chew tobacco still. Um, I was when I was back living in Reno. Uh, I was in a band, Glacier, and our singer Ryan. He was a huge dipper. I mean, chewing tobacco constantly, nonstop at practice, at shows, just chewing tobacco. And then he quit using the patch and gums, and he hated it. And we were at, I think we were at a clutch show actually, and. Uh, I had uh, a little device on me. I don't even remember what I have. It was kind of like a little similar thing like this. Just a little tiny mod and a little tiny tank. Then I was using it infrequently throughout the show. And he's like, hey, can I, can I try that? Uh, and I said, yeah, absolutely. He stole it from me and vaped it the entire show. Um, all, the, all the bands, opening band, clutch. He was using it and vaping it. And he spit out his tobacco and just <coughs> pardon me just used the vaping for the few hours that we were there at the show and he gave it back to me at the end he's like thanks i i want to buy one of those and i was like well shoot me an email and, and you know i can hook you up with something he's like oh no no you know i want to go buy it i want to you know i want to do my own research and buy it i'm like well i hope that works for you so hopefully ryan hopefully ryan got a uh hopefully ryan got a vape and stopped dipping and chewing tobacco but yeah Absolutely. There's people out there who dip and chew tobacco that vaping could possibly work for them. And uh, I think that's an excellent point. Bryant, thank you for uh, thank you for sending that out to my way. Uh, now, uh, here's the last one, and this is kind of a long one. So this goes this comes from Sean. Uh, he goes by Crew Jones of Rad Racing, which if you're familiar with the movie Rad, then yes, you know that that's a great movie. Dear Nick, of course I love you. <laughs> what? But no template here. I'm writing to shout out an owner and vendor that went above and beyond to fix a problem. Specifically, owner Tim Campbell and his company, Vapor Beast. Without boring you with all the details, I will say they dropped the ball, which ended up with me being very upset. I went on a few social media outlets and vented my frustration, as we often do. But the next day, I got a personal phone call from Tim, the owner. He allowed me to vent my story and gave me a very sincere apology. Gave me the most sincere apology I've ever had and assured me that it was not the standard of his company structure. He made it up to me more than I could have ever asked for. I hope you put this in your vlog because right now with corporate giants and the law breathing down our neck, we need to support small businesses. The American dream is what this industry is built on. Tim and his family started Vapor Beast in their home and have grown to many, employ many employees and thousands of shipments per day. If this isn't the American dream, I don't know what is. 
We need to keep that alive and vendors like Vapor Beast going because Tim and his staff truly do care about vaping, vapors, and this industry and our freedom. Believe me, you learn a lot when a busy guy takes an hour out of his day to have a phone call with you. Thank you so much, Nick. Sean uh, Crew Jones from Rad Racing. Um, absolutely. You know what? Uh, that's what vaping is. Vaping is small business. Um, vaping is small business. I don't know that I've ever met Tim, although I have met some people from Vapor Beast. I met, I saw them at ECC. I've seen them at a couple of vape meets, um, and they always seemed like a stand-up company, and obviously this is a first-hand account. Mr. Sean had an issue, and uh, the owner of the company, Tim, called him to uh, on the phone to make things right, which I think is, uh, absolutely, I think, that's, uh, I think that's a very good thing. Do I have time for one more shout out uh let's see uh yeah sure let's end this on an up note jamie a fellow named jamie writes to me and hey nick this is not your avid shout out request i'm not really asking for one okay instead this is to let you know that i watch your videos i have for a long time now so keep up the good work a certain part has had an abnormal effect on my fiance abnormal effect on your fiance case in point the normal view section Every time the movie theater section comes up with the normal view song, the next day she gets it stuck in her head. <laughs> this is made this is made awkward as she works in a lab and is quiet so her colleagues see a woman as they pass rocking from side to side with normal view, normal view. playing in her head. Thought you would find this humorous. She'd just die if you mentioned it. Sorry for the long explanation. Uh, I just needed to set the scene. Jay, absolutely, Jay. You and your wife, uh, Kate, always more than welcome to watch the videos. Always welcome, more than welcome to sing the normal view music uh, in your head whenever you want. Uh, just don't make it awkward. That normal view uh, clip that I use in my weekly review series is actually from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's one of the best te television shows that has ever existed. And uh, that's from the Mystery Science Theater 3000 movie that they do the uh, normal view normal view and it's uh i just i liked it i thought it was funny so i uh i stole it and i put it in my videos but actually james and uh, and kate consider yourself shouted out you're more than welcome to sing the music anytime you want well now that we're getting into this vlog i do have some stuff that i picked up at vape meets as well as some stuff that came in the mail some of it good some of it not so good some of it very very weird so what i want to do right now is some first impressions All right, so I'm filling up this tank here, but this is one of the things I want to be talking about on this first impressions, and I may or may not ever do a review for this. I might do a quick review for it. Pibasardo already has his hour and a half long review for this particular product. This is the Kanger Sub uh, Kanger Sub Box Mini. Um, I actually just straight up stole this. I didn't steal it. Uh, Good Life Vapor was uh was using these for their uh for their tasters for their taster juices at uh, at the vccpa event and i was like oh you guys have the kanger Subbox mini i kind of want one of those um are you selling them and you know jason's like no no we're not selling them but you know what at the end of the event we're giving these all away anyway i'll i'll save a white one for you and i was like oh, yes you will you will save a white one for me this is loaded up with uh <clears throat> pardon me Robin, Stuart, what's it loaded up with? That's right, it's loaded up with Boilermaker Rivet, which actually pairs very, very well with this beer. Just very well. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, I'm dripping all over the place. So, this updated sub-tank and updated sub-tank coils are fucking awesome. God, the vape is so good. I have this set currently to 35 watts. It's a 0.6 ohm coil head at 35 watts, and it's just fantastic. It's everything I want in a vape. It's delicious flavor. It's really nice, smooth, even airflow. I don't get any spit back from it like I do from the Atlantis tanks. It's great. Now this sub tank will work on 
eh, almost anything. Let me put it on something else. I'm going to throw it on the IPv4 real fast. Just, just to see. I haven't put it on anything else. I've only been rocking it on the IPv version 4. Or on the uh, on that sub tank mini box, but yeah. Oh, look at that! Boom, works great. Let me turn down the wattage here, people. Let's turn it back down to thirty five watts. Okay, well, we're gonna have to get close because the IPV is weird like that. Thirty five watts. Uh, so this is the same wattage as it was on the sub box mini. So it should be the exact same vaping experience. great it's great it is just great now the weird thing about this and i knew this from watching phil's video the sub box mini does not have a spring-loaded 510 Ugh. so if you want to use something else on there here's let's look at this aeolus let's put the aeolus on here it's going to screw down and there's going to be a gap there's a gap right here this goes up to uh 40 watts i believe seven, three, eight, three, no 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 oh here we go Oh, 50 watts. Okay, so this has a max 50 watts. This is a 0.3 ohm coil. Okay, so that actually works like a fucking charm on there. Wow. Wow. Whoa, of course my monitor turned off. Congratulations, right in the middle of a video. Let's make sure this monitor turns back on. But yeah, this Aeolus 0.3 ohm coil set to 50 watts is working freaking flawlessly on here. Wow, okay, so color be impressed. That's kind of amazing. I didn't think that would work as well as it did on there. Let's try the Silo Beast. I was worried about that non-spring-loaded 510 connection. I'm like, oh, stuff's not gonna work on there. There's gonna be gaps all over the place. That works perfect, look at that, and there's no gap. Okay, 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 Kanger, okay, there's no gap. So you can use other things on this. I thought that non-adjusting or non-spring-loaded 510 would really be an issue, but it's not because I've used the both the Aeolus and the Silo Beast on there and it works great. Now this is designed to work with this tank and this mod and that's how you buy it and that's how you use it. And if that's what you're doing, if that's how you're buying it and that's how you're using this, perfect. It works perfect. Single 18650 on this side magnetic door enclosure they cut they give you stickers so you can uh, make your battery look the same color through that K on there but I don't care um, the only problem I've had with this is locking it and unlocking it okay locked perfect one two three four five unlocked okay I was sitting at the airport and I was trying to lock this and it wouldn't lock it just wouldn't lock I hit one two three four five and then it would fire. And I'm like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And it wouldn't lock. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now, great. Yeah, now we're on video. It's working just fine. This is a fantastic fucking little setup. And I, uh, if you're using, again, if you're using this with this, it's going to work flawlessly. Doesn't have a spring loaded 510, so it's not going to be as, uh, you know, versatile as some other devices and mods out there. But. Single 18650, 50 watts, Kanger sub tank with the updated coils and the white tank. I just wanted a white tank because that looks so fucking cool. The white finish on here is uh, is not holding up amazingly. There's a bunch of scuffs on it already. Got a huge scuff here across the tank. Got a big scuff right here across the top. Can't really see it on video, but they're there white scuffs up uh, it scuffs up pretty easily obviously I want to spend more time with that before I speak to it uh, before I speak to it completely another device I got and this comes from Advken ADV Ken ADV KEN I'll post the link in the description this is a dual 18650 parallel box and it's grippy look at that look where your fingers go the button here it's like the silver bullet style button it's nice and clicky. It works. This works awesome. I just love using it. So this has a 
uh, Tugboat V2 on there, and it doesn't have a spring-loaded 510, but it does have an adjustable 510. There's a flathead screw in there, and you can adjust it up or down, kind of like the old Segeli 100 watt. You adjust it up or down based on the dimensions of your uh, atomizer posts. If you have a longer one, you need to screw it down. If you have a shorter one, you need to screw it up. But this Tugboat version 2 works on there, sits nice and flush. This is so freaking comfortable to hold in either hand, right or left hand. It's so freaking comfortable to hold. It's got that detonator trigger right there. I've been loving this, loving this. It's been fantastic. And now I don't know how much these damn things cost. Uh, Advocan, let me get to their website. Uh, they make a cherry bomber clone. There you go. They make a wooden box mod. Why is this mod not on here? If their cherry bomber clone is as well built as this is, then shit. They have a wooden box, a solid wooden box. I don't see this mod on here. All I see is their wooden box, which also looks really, really nice. Huh. I don't see it. I'm going to post a link in the description to their website, but honestly, I don't see this mod on there. I can't imagine. It comes from China, so I can't imagine that it's going to cost more than 40 or 50 bucks, and if you want a... Oh, that one looks nice. Their wooden boxes look really, really nice. There's one in particular that's like stripy wood. Fuck, that looks cool. Um, it feels like a high-end mod. Like it feels like the highest quality China mod that I've ever experienced. I had that other one that was a lot like this that was the Tesla. This one is much, much nicer. Even on the fit and finish on the inside where your batteries go in, it's all branded. Adven number 600. It's got a door that slides on grooves that just goes in so nice and perfect this is fantastic uh, obviously like all of my first impressions i can't stress this enough i do need to spend a lot more time with this before i can feel comfortable speaking about it on uh, on video but so far so far this has been freaking awesome and another thing i got from this same company a fellow named boris sent these to me so these didn't come directly from advent these came from a guy named boris i don't know if he runs a shop so oh there it is it's called the quid quid <laughs> Quinangba. <laughs> what? Quinangba mod. Copper contact pin, uh, wooden mechanical mod, Chinese Quindabga logo. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm not good at uh, pronouncing things. So, so there you go. Uh, these are cool. These are cool. And I'll post a link in the description. Another thing that this company, Advken, has is the Mad Hatter. RDA. And so I got a Mad Hatter full size RDA and the Mad Hatter mini RDA. And the Mad Hatter RDA is a lot like the freak show. Do you see the airflow right there? And then on this side right there works the exact same way. And this is an atomizer that when you build it, you have to paint. Remember I talk about painting the coils. This is you paint the coils. You don't just dump juice in there. You paint the coils. Um, let's take a toot on it first before we do any coil painting. Uh, this has been fantastic. One thing that I really like about this is it's kind of unique in that the top, the Mad Hatter, meaning that the hat comes off, the hat comes off on this. So if you're holding it like this and you're vaping it and you hold it like this and you go pop, the top just pops off. It's on a little hinge right there snaps down pops off and then you can see your coils in there and I don't have anything in special in there it's just a five wrap 24 gauge canthal build but you can see your whole build in there should I be that guy should I focus up really really close on it so you can see everything that's going on answer yes I will be that guy so that's my build in there airflow comes from the sides from the bottom and you can just see your whole build in there. There's a mesh screen to keep spit back down. You can see your whole build in there. And it's great because, oh, you go, oh, there's my whole build. Those are the coils that I need to paint. I take my juice, I paint my coils, close this, 
snap it together, and uh, it's good to vape again. And those little, uh, you know, that little screen in there really, really does help with spit back. Now, I noticed that unless your O-rings on the top cap are lubricated with some juice or spit or water, as Omboy OC calls it, it, it's hard to, like, press this down. It doesn't stay. It likes to go down and pop back up just a little bit. But if they're lubricated, you can just go and it pops back down. This is fan-fucking-tastic. I think this is so cool that you just go, hi. There's my build in there. What's your build? Oh, that's my build. Oh, look, I need to paint my coils. Paint my coils in there. And uh, pop it back down. Vape it. You're good to go. Rad. It's pretty rad. Um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, uh. No, I'm just going to include it in this one. Fuck it. I might not have any first impressions next week. <laughs> but what I do have is uh, this copper mech mod here. Now, I got this for, at VCCPA. It's called the Fate. It has Fate on the bottom there. Now, it looks like a copper mech mod. It's got a sugar skull engraved on it. It looks like a copper mech mod. It's got that annoying two-pin design in the top, which... We're, I, evidently, we're just never going to get away from as an industry. We're going to have two-pin adjustments on the top of every mech mod. But this one has one very interesting, unique feature that lends itself to a little bit more of durability. So you see it says Fate there on the bottom. Do you see that silver ring going around the body, around the body of the button, but underneath the body of the mod, there's like a silver ring around there? Well, that ring is titanium. And he did this neat little, uh, you know, home shopping network infomercial style display for me. Um, there's some mods out there like this, like the rig, like the new tugboat mod, which we're going to talk about next week. The new tugboat mech mod, which we're going to talk about next week. In fact, I don't even really know where that is right now. That's what I'll have for first impressions next week. The new tugboat version too. Titanium, so that if you drop this on the concrete, the ends don't cave and don't bend and render your button completely useless. Um, evidently, it happens with the rig mod a lot, and what'll happen is your button will get stuck because you've dropped this on the ground and dented the copper. The copper's not a super hard material, and it will pinch and pinch your button in there if you drop it a lot. He took his fate mod, and he's like slamming it against this rock, and he's just denting the fuck out of it, but because of that titanium ring in there, the button was just glidey, buttery smooth, while the outside of the mod looked like it had been chewed up and spit out. Like he was just slamming it on this rock. He had a big rock on his countertop. Slamming it on the rock, the titanium ring remained intact. It kept all the internals nice and just clean and buttery smooth, but the outside of the mod just looked uh, destroyed. I don't know if I'm gonna take it that far, but I did wanna show it on video before it turns, uh, well, before it turns brown because that's what copper mods do. But yeah, this combination has been uh, rad. The Mad Hatter Mini, and I have a Mad Hatter full size somewhere over here. Here it is. I haven't built this one yet. Uh, I want to build it, but basically it functions the same way. Top comes off. You can see your whole deck in there, and it's a standard like three post uh, deck. The deck's not anything special. It looks exactly like the Freak Show deck, actually. Exactly like the Freak Show deck. Let me zoom in. Exactly like the Freak Show deck. The airflow comes from the bottom, then you have three posts right there. It looks like the middle post on this one is uh, actually copper. So yeah, that's uh, that's the, the, the Mad Hatter and the Mad Hatter Mini. I'm excited, I'm gonna build this one today so that I can uh, so that I can rock it I love this look at that you just it opens and you can drip your juice and then it closes and you you vape I even like the airflow so the last first impression that I have to talk about tried and true there was uh, 
Volcano, uh, I don't know why there was such a big pause there. Volcano e-cigs has been around forever. Um, and they've been releasing the Lava Tube mod forever. And this is the newest version of that. They're sticking in there with a tube mod. This is the Lava Tube version 3. And uh, it's actually powered by an Evolve DNA 40. It's got a really different looking display though. And these sleeves are interchangeable so that I can pull this black one off of here and I could put a blue one or a pink one or uh, an orange one or a black one on there. And of course they sent me a green one. It's nice and uh, rubber grippy on there. It's 24 millimeters around. So RDAs aren't gonna sit flush with it. But the threads on this are just, I mean, flawless threads on here. They do make their own lava cell batteries now, which say 35 amp, 18650 ultra high drain, LIMN battery, 3.7 volts, 2800 ma, 35 amps discharge current. I don't know what these are rewraps of. I can only assume that these are rewraps of something, and I don't know how accurate they are. But it's a very old school mod. You throw your battery in there, there's a spring in the bottom. You screw this together to into the control head, just like that. You press the button, it says 40 watts powered by Evolve. Again, we're gonna have to zoom in. But yeah, that's, that's an actually powered by an Evolve DNA 40 chip, but it's got a very different looking display. So I want you to pay attention to this battery indicator up there. That battery indicator says full, and I know for sure that this is a fully charged battery. Fully charged. I put it on the charger, it said 100%, and I took it off. And this does not have a spring-loaded 510 in it either. It's not spring-loaded. And it appears not to be... Oh, it is adjustable. Oh, it's reverse-threaded. Okay. So it's reverse threaded adjustable 510 in there. A reverse threaded adjustable 510. So I'm gonna put this Silo Beast on here. And this Silo Beast is uh, 1.3 ohm coil head in there. So it says check atomizer. Okay, so now it's firing. Okay, so now it says 1.8 ohms. So I'm not gonna put rock that at a full 30 watts. So the middle is the fire and you see the adjustment up and down there. So I'm gonna turn this down to like 30 something watts, 30 and some change. Let's go with 33 watts. So 1.8 ohms, 33 watts, should be a highly decent vape. Not bad, doing pretty good. Not bad, doing pretty good. I would actually turn this up a lot more. I'm gonna crank this up to 40 watts. So now it's reading 1.3 ohms, 40 watts. Yeah, it's working, it's working good. And then it gives me a low battery warning. And then that battery symbol on there goes to empty. And it's not even giving me close to 40 watts, it's giving me 16 watts, and then it says weak battery, and then it shows me that my battery's empty. And then I open it up, I reset the device, I screw this back together, I turn it on, Lava Tube V3 powered by Evolve, and now my battery indicator is full again, and it'll give me the full 40 watts for a couple toots before it says low battery and will only give me 17 watts. Nope, it's doing it even right now. It just says weak battery. It just says weak battery. Weak battery, seven watts. Weak battery, seven watts. Nine watts, 10 watts, 12 watts, weak battery. Uh, I don't quite know what's going on here. I kinda wanna blame Evolve for this. Uh, this battery is without a doubt 100% charged. And just in case, I have another battery right here that is 100% charged. It's at 100% when I just took it off the charger. So I'm gonna put that in there. Lava Tube 3, powered by a ball, full battery. It's got a full battery right there. 
I hate to do this zooming in stuff so much, but it says full battery. Now, let's, uh, let's have a couple toots on it. Nope, weak battery. It's telling me I have a weak battery and the battery indicator is now dead. It's now zero. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this. It's weird. I think it's kind of weird, right? Uh, that shouldn't, I don't feel like that should be something that's happening. So maybe it's the tank. Maybe it's the Silo Beast tank. Well, thankfully, Volcano now makes their own sub-tank style uh, atomizer. It's called the Tube Tank. Let's put this on here. This is 0.6 ohms, so I'm going to leave it at 40 watts, and it's just giving me a weak battery. Um, it's just giving me a weak battery. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to reach out to Volcano. I hate doing this. It just adds more time and frustration onto doing a review. But reach, I'm going to reach back out to the vendor, back to Volcano, see what they have to say about it. Um, I don't know. On a DNA 40, I can rock 40 watts at a 0.6 ohm coil with no problems. This is 40 watts with a 0.6 ohm coil, and it sucks. It gives me the weak battery, constantly flashing weak battery, and it shows that my battery is dead when in fact my battery is 100% full. So yeah, Lava Tube version 3. Otherwise, the threads are really nice, and it's not too big and batani. It's kind of a good uh, tube size. Weak battery. Okay, okay. Weak battery. That's It is what it is, and that's a weak battery. So we did a bunch of first impressions. We already drank beer. We already did shout-outs. We already talked about the IPV version 4, uh, VCCPA. So what I have prepared now is some retro vaping. All right, well, here we go with retro vaping. And what I want to talk about is uh, a tube mod. That Lava Tube version 3 inspired me to revisit the world of tube mods. Now, I love tube mech mods. I think they're great. I think they're small. Look how much smaller this Lava Tube or this mech mod with an RDA is smaller than that Lava Tube. It's just little tube mech mods are great. And I love using them. One thing I used to really, really love, this was my pride and joy. I loved this thing. This is the Silver Bullet. Now the Silver Bullet originally obviously was silver. It was a chromy silver device. Uh, and then they did a whole bunch of colors. They Actually, they first they only did black. So at first there was the Silver Bullet and the Black Silver Bullet. And now, well, not now, but then, after that, they released a whole slew of colors. Blue, purple, green, orange, all the colors of the rainbow. And so, of course, green with a black button uh, was appealing to me. So this was a single 18650 device with a wired switch. So you put your battery in there. You can see it floating on the little spring. And you had to put NOAA locks on your threads so that they were smooth. Because otherwise they'd go... And be squeaky, you had to put no locks on your threads. And as such, you got no locks all over your fingers, all over the mod every time you opened it. And no locks doesn't taste good. Gross! Oh, God! Anyway, the silver bullet was one of my favorite things, uh, I mean, of all time. So, this is a standard resistance 510 cardamizer. Ah! <laughs> with a cherry vape drip tip on there. And 18 single 18650, just 3.7 volts wired switch, 510 cardamizer. Uh, I'm getting texted, so you need to be silent now. 510 cherry drip tip. Uh, this was it. This was my this was my everyday all day everyday vape. Clouds, bro. Clouds for days. 
I vaped this. <laughs> a lot of people vaped this. In fact, shout out to uh, Lunatic Status Kyle. At the first vape bash, he had his silver bullet and I had my silver bullet. And then at the second vape bash, he had his silver bullet and I had my silver bullet. And at the third vape bash, he had his silver bullet and I had my silver bullet. I stopped bringing silver bullets to vape bash. That used to be a thing. Like I had to bring my silver bullet to vape bash. I just can't do it anymore. Clouds for days. So, what happened with the silver bullet? They still make them. In fact, as time went on, we started using the kick. Does anyone remember, remember the kick? Well, I have a kick. This is the kick right here. This was one of Evolve's first products, and it turned a mod like this, a mech mod, into a wa variable wattage up to 10 watts mod. And you put a smaller battery in there, so that the length of your battery and your kick was as long as an 18650. So you could put that in there, you put the kick on top right there, and then when you screwed this all down together, you had a little module in there, and the kick had to be, whoops, the kick had to be grounded on the inside of the mod. And now, instead of getting just 3.7 volts, now I'd be getting 10 watts. Uh, regulated power out of this same device. So it should be, I mean, theory says it should be a little bit better of a vape. Mm -hmm. It's a lot warmer. It's a lot, lot warmer, a lot, lot nicer too. Um, I don't know what juice this is and I happen to have a random unicorn bottle that I don't know what juice it is either. So, we're going to put it in here. Oh, I think this is liquid swords. Just going to fill up my cartomizer there. I used to rock this with a kick and a cardo tank. Uh, just, that was it. That's all I ever wanted to vape. What was great about the silver bullet is it was cheap. They were like 80 bucks. And so if you had a silver one, I'm like, ooh, I like that green one, buy a green one, 80 bucks. Yeah, I like that blue one, buy a blue one, doesn't matter, 80 bucks. Ooh, I like that purple one, buy a purple one. That was their whole marketing thing was different colors. This was like the gold standard of tube button mods. Um, Alt Smoke sold this. In fact, I think they still sell it. I think they still sell it. Oh, no, that's not the right address. Altsmoke.com. I think altsmoke.com still sells this. They for sure sell the Silver Bullet M, um, which is the mechanical version of this. Intermediate kits, advanced kits, the Silver Bullet. There you go. And they're still 80 bucks, 84 bucks. Oh, that's right. They had Silver Vein. Black, silver, silver vein, white, green, purple, orange. That's kind of fantastic. That is kind of fantastic. So, silver bullet. It was a thing, and it was uh, it was a major thing. I mean, it's got 431 reviews on their site, and they're all fucking five-star reviews. Now, this is wired, and there's no MOSFET like there is now to protect the switch. So I think running an RDA on here would be a bad idea, but because I'm an idiot, I wanna try it anyway. So I'm gonna re-put my 18650 in here. I'm gonna put my Aeolus on here. Now this did not have a spring-loaded 510 connection at all. Oh, that's not gonna fire. What? Of course it's not gonna fire. Does not fire. That does not fire, uh, doesn't fire. Doesn't fire even a little bit. So, what are you gonna do? But yeah, ha! Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet was good times back in the day. So, that was, uh, that's retro vaping. That was the Silver Bullet. I used to use it with a kick and cardo tanks, and it was just, uh, it was just a fantastic, uh, wonderful little thing. So what I wanna do now is I have a fuck ton of email. This vlog is already running long. I might as well answer some viewer mails. 
Viewer mail. All right, my first viewer mail comes to me via Norman. This was on Facebook. He says, "Hey Nick, I'm a big fan, and although I'm new to, uh, though I'm very new to vaping. Anyway, I recently bought my first Mech Mod. After two days, I had a battery shortage. I know yourself and many other YouTube reviewers, vloggers always harp on safety. I think the shortage." He says shortage, but he means short. I think the short on mine was due to something other than me violating Ohm's law. Could you touch on what is the proper protocol when your battery slash mod heats up in one of your videos? We always hear about preventing a, such a scenario, but not about what we should do if and when said scenario occurs. It's actually a really good point. Uh, what will happen when your battery is about to have some sort of catastrophic battery failure is your mod will get warm warmer than normal and will also not fire so let's say i have this fate mod with my top hat mini and i'm just vaping away <laughs> vaping away and then i press the button and nothing happens so i go okay and i press the button again and nothing happens you feel your mod and if it's warm the first thing you do is get your battery out battery out Battery out of your mod. Your battery will probably feel warm. Set it somewhere, set it aside. What I do is I don't throw it in water. Don't throw it in like the fucking toilet. What I end up doing is I take it outside and put it on my concrete porch or I just throw it in the sink. Hopefully not one with a garbage disposal. Toss it in the sink, let it cool down. That's how you avoid your batteries venting and your battery failure. If you were to just leave this battery in here and keep firing it and keep firing it wondering going wow why is mine getting so hot I just keep firing it and nothing is happening I keep firing it and nothing's happening why is it getting so hot that is when bad things happen that would be a bad thing happening due to a hard short or not every short is due to violating Ohm's law, but that would be something a hard short, like using a atomizer that's not designed to be used on a hybrid on a hybrid. That would be hard shorting your battery. Another option that people run into with batteries, which is why a lot of mech mods have really stiff springs, like this Fate has a pretty stiff spring, is auto firing. So on other mech mods, on older mech mods like the Nemesis, it happened to me, you set it down and it starts firing under its own weight. And then you leave the room and it's just firing and firing and discharging that battery and discharging that battery. That's when you run into problems as well. Unfortunately, you're generally not there when it's happening or it's happening somewhere else like in your pocket or backpack. The first sign of a warm battery, get the freaking battery out of your mod. And it helps if your mod when batteries vent, they expand. So if your mod, like this one, has a little bit of space to expand, you'll still be able to get your battery out. There's a lot of mods out there that are so flush with the batteries where they, where they are stored in the mod that if your battery expands even a little, you're not gonna be able to get it out. What you wanna do if you can't get your battery out is at least separate your atomizer from your device so that it's not firing anymore. That's what you wanna do at the very, very least. Damn, that's a good vape. Damn, that is a good vape. So yeah, there you go, uh, Norman. Hope that, uh, Hope that helps out. Hope that helps out. Let me get to my uh, let me get to my other viewer mails. I'm not gonna do any music this week because <sighs> music. God damn it, music upsets me. Um, uh, so, okay, uh, no, that's not actually uh, a viewer mail. That's not a viewer mail. That's China spam. Uh, this this uh, this email comes to me from Anders, not from Workaholics. Anders, hey, it's Anders again. I need help. I'm still vaping my Segeli Mini 30 watt. I'm looking to upgrade my device to something more powerful, probably the IPv version four. I currently have two VTC5s, but I want to get some fresh batteries before I get the new device. I was wondering if you could offer some suggestions. I understand that battery preferences are quite subjective. They're not. I've heard recently that there are a lot of rewraps out there, which is why I'm asking someone I trust for advice. Anders, go to imrbatteries.com. I'll post the link in the description. 
they have oh come on I am I am our batteries dot com they have a fuck ton of batteries so the Samsung 25 R's are generally considered to be some of the best batteries uh, in existence right so you can use their drop down menu and go to 18650 batteries um, Oh, that's 16650 batteries. I didn't know 166 I guess 16650 is a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. Click on 18650 batteries and they have a whole list of them. Now, rewraps are the things that is ruining vaping. I'll just go ahead and say it. Rewraps are what are ruining vaping because you can't rely on a battery anymore because People can rewrap and rewrap and rewrap whatever they want. In fact, some of my favorite batteries, the MXJOs, everyone's like, oh no, those are rewraps of this, that, and the other. And sometimes they're rewraps of this, that, and the other. I like the MXJOs. For that, for me, they've been uh, the most consistent battery that I've used. Now, I do have a bunch of these sub-ohm cells as well, which I'm told are rewraps of other batteries. Uh, the first batch was at least a rewrap of something else, and the second batch of sub ohm cell was a rewrap of something else. I'm going to link in the description to the Samsung 25R batteries, which are 20 amp batteries, as well as the MXJO 1600 milliamp hour, which are 30 amp batteries. Now, the MXJOs make a lot of sense to me, and I haven't done any battery tests on them. In fact, I don't have any friends that even do battery tests on things 18650 1600 milliamp hour 30 amp flat top batteries the 1600 ma and the 30 amp kind of makes sense because the higher your ma is the lower your amp limit's going to be on your battery so i'll post the link in the description like i said to imrbatteries.com i'll post the link to the samsung 25rs and i'll post the links to the the mxjo 18650 batteries that i use as well but there is a okay so there's the samsung oh my god there's so many fucking batteries samsung 30b are those any good uh it says they have sony vtc4 batteries but as far as i know sony vtc4 batteries aren't being produced anymore so i'm assuming these are rewraps um whatever you do i know i said this in my taking the next vaping step video just don't buy the vamped vapor cells. I hate those things. They all are shit. All the vamped vapor cells that I've used have been shit. They have been crappy, crappy, crap, crap, don't work very well, crap. I would never, ever, ever feel comfortable doing a like favorite batteries video or recommending all of my favorite batteries because there's so many freaking rewraps. Even these AWT batteries, which I have, that are 2500 milliamp hour and 35 amp batteries, which doesn't quite make sense in my head. They look like rewraps of MXJOs. They even use the same like design and layout and logo. I don't know. There's so many rewraps. Head over to IMR Batteries and read some reviews for the batteries. I'll link you to the two that I feel are pretty good, but then again, they could be rewraps of something else. Generally, for me at least, and let me know in the comments below what your favorite battery is. The MXJOs have been uh, have been quite uh, have been quite consistent in there. Anyway, anyway, I hope that answers. Uh, Hope that answers your question there, Anders. Anders. Um, I have one more. Uh, the most of these are, will you review our products? Kanger. Here we go. Evan. Evan asks, hey, I had one question on the last get. What? Hey, I had questions on the last get sub box mini kit. I don't know what that means. I just wanted to know a few websites to buy it. You just, just use Google. <laughs> Most of the e viewer mails that I get or emails that I get are easily answered by Google. In fact, if I Google Subbox Mini Kit, my Freedom Smokes, my Vapor Store, Kanger Online, uh, Fast Tech is also in there, uh, UK eSig Store, MyVapeDeal.com. Go to my Vapor Store. There's where you go. You go to myvaporstore.com to order your black subbox mini kit. Uh, chances are anything you have a question about can be answered by Google, and chances are the product that you're looking for is generally 
on in stock from my vapor store whenever i google a product my vapor store comes up uh comes up first google is your friend everybody evan head over to myvaporstore.com um, I'm just wondering because I'm just getting into the community and I thought this would be perfect. I've had a few mech mods and I didn't enjoy them. It's a lot of hassle. And since, and since it's all about the clouds, I thought I'd try this product. It's not all about the clouds, Evan. Do you have any tips or tricks in ordering this mod? I just turned 18, so I want to legally vape now, even though I've been vaping since I was 16. My vapor store. It's not all about the clouds, but yes, this product, this will produce, uh, this will produce some clouds for you. Um, one more, uh, one more. Oh, okay. So this is a, this is a very, 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 very frequently asked question. Hey, Nick, I just watched your vlog with your room show and tell, and I'm totally and utterly going crazy. I cannot find your tool slash holder slash build deck slash wire storage thing anywhere online. I've now literally tried everything and I can't think of an even tested Google with a picture recognition. What? You may have reviewed it or showed it previously, but short of watching your entire back catalog of videos, I'm screwed. Please help pull me from my miserable state to which I'm holding you entirely responsible and tell me what it is, where it came from, and where I can buy it. Cheers. Keep up the good work. I'm not sure my vaping experience over the last year and a bit would have been as good without watching you and a few other channels reviewing. Okay, so this is not what I'm thinking of. He's talking about this, the min, the the mini deck. He's talking about Shane's mini deck. Um, it's called the mini deck. And you can, uh, you can find it. Uh, no, it brings up, I'll find a link for it. I don't remember. It's, it's like mini deck stand.com or mini deck station.com or something like that. Mini deck vaping. Maybe that'll bring up a search result. Uh, nope. Okay. It's called the mini deck two. It's called the mini deck two. And I'll post a link in the description uh, to where you can find it. I can't remember. Uh, let me just look through my emails real fast. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly uh, where you'll be able to find it, but let's see. Shane Coombs. That's the guy's name. Uh, Shane. Okay, no, here it is. Here it is, dsvapeaccessories.com. Congratulations. You have found it. Uh, it's existing. Uh, who is this guy? Now, I closed this email. Who is this guy? Tool build deck. There you go. Rich, I'm emailing it to you right now, and I'll post the link in the description to where you can check out DS Vape Accessories Custom Fabrication uh, Deck, Building Deck. It's an expensive deck, but it's very, very cool as well. I'm going to touch on it again soon. I'm going to send it back to him for some upgrades before I talk about that again. This has been a very, very disorganized blog, and I apologize. But I'll have links in the description to everything I talked about in this vlog. Um, I'm not going to do any music, but I do have a lot of cool stuff coming out. The next event for me is VaporCon West, Reno, Nevada. You can go to VaporConWest.com and get more information about it there, um, I believe there's still some uh, some rooms open and whatnot. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some food in my system. And uh, yeah, we'll be back here next week. Um, next week, regular review series as normal. Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, Wildcard Wednesday, as well as a vlog on Thursday. So once again, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, who took the time to come say hi at the VCC event in Pittsburgh. I can't help myself. I'm going to grab my little white Kanger Subbox Mini and take this out of here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. All right, thanks everyone for watching. And if you like this vlog, feel free to go back and check out my weekly review series. I'll have them linked below Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. And lastly, comments, feedback, likes, and subscriptions are always appreciated. Thanks so much, everyone. better, right?
right? Better. <laughs> Okay, the last ones were junk, but I'm getting better. 